Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, in this video, we're going to install a diesel heater for a secondary source in our 27 and a half foot uh, Nash travel trailer. Um, we're installing this heater for redundancy, uh, for the dry heat, and for a, a um, you know just a, a good source of efficient heating. We've installed one previously in a cargo camper conversion and liked the, the way they worked and um, the convenience of it. We have a diesel pickup, so it's easy to fill up on diesel whenever we're at the, um, you know, fueling up. And um, we just like the style. So hopefully in this video, we're able to show you more of how this is installed. Uh, right now, it is actually running and um, it has warmed us up. So right now it's at a pretty slow speed, but nice and quiet and keeping us cozy. We ordered the diesel heater. This is, I believe they call it a five kilowatt diesel heater, but sounds like, you know, three and five are pretty much interchangeable words for <laughs> when you're searching online. But um, either way, this is a, um, a knockoff heater that we got online for about $130. Um, so coming in the box, we have a, a fuel tank, the actual heater itself, um, manual, the, uh, a template for you know mounting it to the floor I've already started drawing on it um, but on top of that we have a control a little um, remote that you can actually just haul around with you to turn on and off if you want to or from your bedroom or whatnot uh, I have an exhaust muffler the fuel pump some fuel line uh, wiring for the controls you know, miscellaneous hardware, clamps, all that uh, kind of good stuff. I think some more clamps or uh, install brackets. This is the intake. They call it a filter. Not much of a filter. It keeps squirrels out. That's about it. Uh, this is the intake tube for the air. This is the exhaust tube for the air. Um, and then they have a T if you wanted to use it for the um, actual heat coming out. The you know, exhaust, or not exhaust, but that's the heat tube, and then a vent, so you can install it on the outside of wherever you're going to put it. So, me and my wife have chosen this location to install a heater. Um, and so we've started removing components already, but we chose this location because there is uh, a lot of space that's unused in this cabinet underneath this fridge. So with that unused space, it's conveniently located next to the uh, propane heater. So we can tap that location to install the intake line, or I'm sorry, the air intake and the air, uh, the exhaust for the heater. Um, it's a pretty convenient location, 12 volts readily accessible. The exhaust is going to dump um, into the wheel well, and so we're not gonna have to drill through compartments or multiple layers and it just is going to work overall in a very convenient, or to be very convenient. Also, it's going to heat the main living area. So this is the kitchen, you know, uh, area. So we're typically here. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the floor and uh, just make sure that it comes out in a convenient spot and I'm not close to a frame or anything like that. I've already looked, there's no gas lines, no electrical lines that I'll hit, but um, just making sure that before we start putting big holes in the floor that um, this is going to be work out pretty good for us. Pretty good spot here. Um, we should have space enough for the next hole that has to come forward, you know, somewhere roughly in this location, but obviously it's clear of everything and um, works for us. Uh, so. The last install that I did, I used a hole saw that was large enough that I was able to cut out two holes that covered the whole you know, whole area of this. Uh, this time I'm kind of make, using a different technique and um, not everybody's going to you know, follow the same steps that I'm doing right now. But I'm using this hole saw and I'm going to be cutting a smaller hole uh, that, you know, obviously it would be enough to encompass this, but um, doesn't give as much clearance as I did last time. Some of you might have used a hole saw before, but if you haven't, um, I cut through one layer of plywood already, and so that piece is stuck inside of this hole saw. So typically they have holes, you know, located around that you're able to use a tool and just kind of work it out. So just showing you that tip. <laughs> it's 
not never as easy as you want it to be, but it's not impossible either. So once that's cleared out, you're able to start again and uh, continue on. Otherwise, this thing gets full of plugs like this, and it's going to stop because it bottoms out. So anyway, I'm going to install this as a heat shield for the exhaust of that diesel heater. Um, I'm going, I took this piece of stainless steel. Um, it was just something I had lay, laying around. I could have used basically anything, but um, made the hole in the top using another hole saw and it closely fits the exhaust. And then I just slid it over and over again um, with a pair of tin snips and then, you know, just used a hammer and kind of angled it over. I'm going to use this high temperature silicone, put it on the inside edge here put it over the top and using one of these hose clamps keep it tightly clamped over it until that silicone cures. Um, this is what's going to go through the floor of the fifth wheel that way it can try to prevent any kind of um, heat damage and I'm sealing it tightly that way it, cold air is not able to get in, rodents aren't able to get in, anything like that and um, so yeah that's my, my sealed heat shield that I'm going to install. Uh, typically, you don't have to go through this troubles, but uh, I'm believing that in our situation, it might be the most beneficial way to go. We're going to install the uh, the barb on this tank. So I've already marked where I want to put it. That way, no mistakes are made. Um, inside the tank, they actually ship it with a baggie full of the parts that you'll need. So in there is the little uh, actual nipple itself, a couple of O-rings and then the nut that goes on the bottom side with no ring that would go inside of there too. So um, what I've read previous is that um, you'll drill the hole, then you actually slide this down it, and then you can feed your, your nipple down and uh, into that hole that you just drilled. So I've already measured this, looks like 3 16 inch drill is gonna work, so I'm gonna drill that out. through the filler or through the neck. I already installed the O-ring on it. You have it right where you want. And then you just put your second O-ring on. to hold this you know, inner piece with a pair of pliers or something like that as you tighten this but uh, that's how you install this one so this is the install that we have now I went ahead and changed this exhaust it was single wall pipe and it was getting a bit warmer than I was liking so I made it double walled put some insulation in there that is ceramic it's actually for kilns um, it's for uh, aluminum melting, melting kiln that I made. Went ahead and wrapped that exhaust in some actual exhaust wrap because I had it and why not. It would have been much easier to go ahead and st install it straight to the floor, but I felt like I didn't have enough clearances around tires and such. So I went ahead and continued with what I had planned, but had to change it up a little bit. But it does work and runs, and so I'm going to go ahead and button it up now. So this is the underside of our camper uh, where the exhaust exhaust you know in the wheel wells area so that's the exhaust it is running at a slow speed so you can kind of hear it that's my double wall pipe that i installed along with some wrap exhaust wrap just to try to keep this cool right now you know i'm able to keep my hand on it it's not not bad at all uh, this is the intake a fuel line and the control to the pump. And that's the filter. Like I said, it just has a screen on it, so it doesn't really keep out much other than uh, you know larger debris, but it works and we've never had a problem with ours. So this is the fuel pump underside. I hung it on a couple of zip ties just to try to isolate that clicking sound from the frame. Um, in our cargo camper, we could hear it clicking throughout. 
this thing has a lot more mass, so there's a good chance it wouldn't have caused a problem, but I went ahead and floated it just to avoid that issue. So this is where the fuel tank's located. It's on the driver's side, so when we're filling up the truck, we're able to fill up the fuel tank as well. It's just in this cubby. Seems to be a, a pretty good location, out of the weather and elements and such. I did have to put some spacers on the back side because my area is unique where I would have run into this frame otherwise. Alright, so I have the heater pretty well installed. I've already pre-primed uh, the lines up to the fuel filter, but it's not uh, primed all the way to the fuel pump. So um, with this style of uh, uh, control, you have to press and hold the up and down arrows for a little bit. I think they said two seconds. And then this little pump indicator comes on here, and it's actually priming now. So I guess you just use your judgment, hold it for a little while, and it should be primed after you release. All right, now that we have this primed, um, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Once it's started and actually producing a little bit of heat, we'll start a timer here, and um, we'll check it out in 30 minutes and an hour and see what the temperature is rising up to. Obviously, it's 38 degrees inside here, so pretty chilly, windy day. So. Hold this power button down for just a bit and you see the icons change and it's in startup mode right now. We'll go ahead and start this and just uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so we've missed our 30 minute mark by a little bit, but it has warmed up in here. It's reading 50 degrees inside, 38 out. Um, this is a 27 and a half foot fifth wheel. And it does have a slide out, which is slid out right now. Uh, we do have all the doors open, so it's trying to heat the entire living space. The thermostat's basically just around the corner from where the heater is. Um, that was the easiest place to locate it where it wasn't uh, in the way or anything like that. So, I'm just chugging along. Okay, so we're at our one hour update now. So the outside temperature's warmed up a little bit, it's 41, but uh, our inside temperature is warmed up quite a bit more. I'll try to get where you can view it, but this says 56. And um, it's still chugging along, but it is definitely warming it up in here. So here's our two hour update. Um, so it's gotten windy outside, but the temperature's risen a little bit. Our current temperature inside the uh, RV is 66 degrees though. Um, this temperature sensor is closer to the door, so of course it, the living area is a little bit more comfortable, um, at least where our tables and such are. Up by the bedroom might be cooler, but it does seem to be doing a pretty good job warming this place up, so keeping it comfortable. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was informative and helps give you some ideas on what it'll take to install a diesel heater.